Hey, brothers and sisters, this is Anthony More for Your Money More from the Freeman Descendants of Chicago, formerly known as ADOS Chicago. And once again, we are enlisting your support for an executive order that we are pushing our governor here in Illinois to sign, multi-billionaire Democrat J.B. Prisca, who inherited all his money. And even though he spent a uh, reported at least $154 million to be of his own inheritance, a small percentage of his own inheritance, to be elected back in 2018 as governor for the first time, and now he's up for re-election again. And I think he's going to spend even more of this money, I mean, even more this time. But even with that being the case, we still call him JB. I wouldn't be governor without the black vote press because guess what? Guess why? He wouldn't be governor without the black vote. And so the 1619 Rapid Relief Executive Order, order click below for more information, but it's policy targeted specifically toward black people with a preference on those of us who have descended from U.S. chattel slavery. And it's not just about making sure we get our fair share of the three COVID bills, plus the federal infrastructure money, a reported $17 billion that's coming to Illinois, but that the money is spent in specific and explicit ways that are commiserable with this new unfolding still yet to be determined post-COVID global, global economic paradigm, doing things differently, reconstructing them, doing, doing them better, improving them, being innovative, forward thinking, what they will rightfully do if these people were about doing what's best by the people, if these people were really about doing what the job is supposed to be about, which is about serving and uplifting and, and empowering the people. In this case, Prisca, the people most responsible for putting you into that governor's office. Black folks. All right. Now, the website, which we want you to click below for the executive order, is hardbeingblack.info. I-T- S H A R D B E I N G B L A C K dot I N F O is named after Prisca's own words because after our brother George Floyd was murdered by the people who, who swear an oath to serve and protect. But unfortunately, when it comes to black folks, especially those, those of us who have descended from U.S. chattel slaves, they often instead neglect and threats, and that's if they're not putting us in the chokehold or literally putting a boot on our neck that strangles us to death. Yeah, them people. The, we know the ones we know it ain't all of them, but the ones that it apply to. Well, it well when that happened, Prisca, JB, I wouldn't be governor without without the black vote. Prisca said it's hard being black because he was he was offering pandering versus policy because that's the playbook for Nick Rose. It's hard being black. You the governor. The fact that he can say it's hard being black but not but not act on that specific fact shows us exactly where it's at because you are the literal head of state. I mean, you got over a $40 billion budget. That's not even including the money that we ask for our fair share of the COVID bills and the, the money from the COVID, the, fed, the money from the three federal COVID bills and um, the infrastructure money. We just talking about the basic budget. I mean, you got the total apparatus of government, all the employees, your own police force, your own uh, arsenal of vehicles, an arsenal of technology, an arsenal of facilities, an uh, uh, arsenal of all kind of equipment, an uh, arsenal of the, the courts. I mean, the, the 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 apparatus of government, the apparatus of the state. If it's any, not, and that's not to even mention the multi-billions that he inherited that he got in his own personal life. So if it's anybody that can do something that's hard about it being black, if it's anybody that should do something about it hard being black here in the state of Illinois, is him. But the fact that this meant, but that's the playbook for Negroes nationwide. We are seen and treated as groups to be used, abused, confused, and to have our political power disfused. Pandering versus policy. Symbolism versus substance. Because they pimps with a pimps mentality. And they operate by the fundamental pimp mantra of why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free. And one of the, one of the problems with our elders who vote these people in time and time again, totally spoiling and destroying and denigrating the legacy of the very civil rights fighters that a lot of them were alive to see. They, some of them said they participated, but they really didn't participate. They were sitting in the sidelines then during the civil rights era, during the civil rights protests and marches and everything that came along with it. They were sitting on the sidelines then like they're sitting on the sidelines now. But at least, but but they, but those who were alive in that era, they denigrate that legacy because these people didn't fight and die and go through all kind of unimaginable hardships and hell for us to get the right to vote for our vote to be exploited and pimped and used and abused and, and just totally siphoned from us. Without 
voting was a means to an end, not the end. But these people got us sold on voting. That's how wicked, but at the same time, how clever these people are. They got us sold on voting as if voting in itself is an accomplishment. And we celebrate voting. And people say, go vote, go vote, go vote, go vote. And by the way, I vote. So you, anytime you criticize this system, they say they try to dis discredit what you say by saying by just anything that make you lose credibility. Like, oh, he don't vote, or he a Republican, not a Republican. Nope, never, never voted for a Republican one time. And I voted in every government election that I've been eligible to vote in since age eighteen. I'm talking about real government, not student, not no Mickey Mouse election, not student government. No shade of student government president, but we talking about the, the real deal. City, state, federal, county, general. I don't think I missed not one. And since I've been 18, in other words, since I've been legally old enough to vote, and I've been 18 for way longer than I would like to admit. Hell, I've been 18 for way longer than I am going to admit, at least doing this video. So the, so the whole thing is, but they got us sold on the fact that voting by itself is an accomplishment, even though you vote for people that don't give a damn about you, even though you vote for people that they whole intention is to use you and abuse you and take you for granted and pimp you and play you, and they do just that because we allow it. The people, our people didn't fight for us to get the right to vote just so that we can vote and feel good and feel our warm and fuzzy inside and feel like we did something when we really did nothing. Voting was a means to an end, and how far we stray from that is unacceptable. Now, when this man said it's hard being black, that was just, that was, he was just, like I said, that was pandering, and he was just checking off his to-do list for that day. I mean, I imagine, like, he's a multi-billionaire who inherited all his money, so I imagine his to-do list for today went something like this. Okay, things to do today, okay? I want to make sure... My uh, seven vacation homes are all spick and span clean and pristine because even though I don't plan on visiting any of them, just in case on a whim I decide to take the private jet and go to one of them, I want to make sure that it's going to be clean, just in case. Uh, number two, I want to make sure my uh, luxury car garage filled with 30 uh, top-of-the-line, rare, luxurious, highly very expensive vehicles are all fully gassed and fully functional because even though I don't plan on visiting my garage, it's good to know that if I went that I can get in any car and just drive it right drive it right off the facility. And I need to pander to Negroes in light of George Floyd being murdered by the police. Okay, so let me see. I called my um I made sure my assistant called all my butlers and maids and I even looked at it on video when they cleaned out the facilities because it just makes me feel good to see them actually cleaning out the facilities so i did that check uh i made sure my uh um fleets my team of mechanics took care of my luxury vehicles they're all gassed up they're all functional i saw that for myself on video never can be too sure Check. I, in light of George Floyd being murdered, I told black folks that it's hard being black. Yes, that's sufficient pandering. Check. Check, check, check. Always feels good to have a day of getting things done. Now for my leisure. I mean, come on now. That's what it is. It's pandering versus policy versus policy checking off his to-do list. Because the fact that this man can say it's hard being black, like I said earlier, but not act on that fact, it shows us exactly where it's at. And the fact that we, and, and now it's re-election time, and he finna, he about to come back to us again, expecting our vote. Because in his mind, our vote is his birthright. He ain't got to do nothing for the black vote, as far as he's concerned, but panic. And until we prove him wrong, that's the mentality that he and politicians all across this nation will continue to have. So like I said before, we enlisting national support because we black people, especially those of us who have descended from freemen, in other words, those of us who have descended from slaves, we need to get fair exchange for our vote, especially at this transformative time that's an inflection point with a whole new emerging global economic paradigm where we can actually reconstruct and do things differently, which is what our efforts is all about. All right? Because the fact that this man can say it's hard being black, like I said, and not act on that fact, he don't think too much of us. But guess what? We don't think too much of him. Hell, it ain't nothing to spend a lot of money that you inherited. 
Hell, it ain't it ain't a lot. It ain't nothing to spend a lot of money if you got it. It's just like somebody will donate a hundred million dollars, but they worth ten billion, and they act now. Of course, it's 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 it's, it's a it's an ulterior motive. A lot of times they do it just to get the 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 positive press from doing it, or to promote some agenda that really ain't necessary for the benefit of the people. But the fact ain't nothing to get money. You got it, a hundred million dollars. You got ten billion. It ain't nothing to get no a hundred million dollars. And that's not to say the money won't do no any good, and that we shouldn't pray, be thankful for any good that the money sincerely does. But to act like these such great people, such these such kind people, because they give us just a small, 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 small fraction of a whole lot of money that they probably obtain in nefarious and exploitive ways. In, in other words, they would have been better off not getting the money in a nefarious way than getting all the money and giving a little bit of it to charity. But yet we'll praise them, especially when these celebrities do it. Follow for the okie doke. Because here's the thing. Here's what we got to keep in mind. For, now we'll make a big deal because this man spent a, a, a very small percentage of his inheritance to buy his way into office, which ain't no accomplishment. Like I said, ain't nothing to spend money if you got it. It's even more so if you inherited it. But the, for a person, a black person who descended from slaves to grow in a drug, say, say they went up in a, grew up in a drug addicted house, parents on drugs, in and out of jail, foster care, often didn't know when their next meal was coming from. But somehow that person finds the way to not just graduate from high school, but graduate from college, maybe get a job make, get a job making sixty seven, seventy thousand dollars a year, enough to live a decent life, feed their family, and be a law abiding citizen. That person's accomplishment is greater than a multi billionaire buying his way in the office because it's much harder for that person that's grew up in that in those conditions to be a law abiding citizen than it is for a multi billionaire to spend a small percentage of his inheritance to get the most powerful position in the state. But we will praise the billionaire. And so all that we are asking is that that person who grows in that messed up situation in a drug addicted parents in and out of jail, in foster home, not knowing what they, where their next meal is coming from, that person have a chance. We're not asking that person be given a bit multi-billion dollar luxurious life of Prisca from coming from a multi-billion dollar family dynasty, multi-generational, oh, 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 money. We're not asking for the privilege and opportunity that you had, Prisca. We're just asking that that person that grows up in the messed up conditions, all of us have a chance that if we apply ourselves and choose to operate within the confines of the law, despite whatever background we come from, and we that we have an opportunity to thrive, not just survive, but thrive. In other words, that's what government is supposed to do, create conditions where their citizens can thrive if they apply themselves. That's what we're talking about. All right? So, yeah, Anthony Moore, Free Money Moore, Free Medicine in Chicago, 1619 Rap Relief Executive Order, the Vitus of Health Crisis and Disease Bill that we help get past and craft, that they trying to pimp that out too, so we got to stay diligent with that. Shout out to the United Sons and Daughters of Freedmen. Let's go.